Hello folks, um, my name is Grant Malentic. I'm a principal consultant with SRK in Denver. I'd like to thank Tim and the SME to present on one of my favorite topics. My focus will be a little more tactical down to the project valuations, especially in the 43101 space. So why this presentation? Well, uh, we've seen variations of this graph uh, quite often during this uh, conference and others, but let's just say the last five years have not been very kind to this industry. I mean, you got the S&P 500 up here, Toronto Global Index down there, but we've, we've all seen this before. So what this means in a period of low metal prices and low market caps is that cost differentiation is the main driver for companies uh, trying to uh, attract interest for um, investment. And I think Dave, this is Dave Cox, this is uh, straight out of your SNL Mine Economics, a very good little tool. I just took Escondida, found the costs there on the cost curve for copper. And um, again, this is really becoming a, you know, in this period of low metals, a main differentiator. So the problem is how do we define these costs? You can see here there's all sorts of different definitions. And it's not a surprise, mining's quite a diverse industry, geography, commodity, histories. So what we're gonna try to do is just kind of go through these and just uh, give some rules and thumbs we use at SRK to perhaps simplify. Um, especially in a, a looking at a project valuation at a 43101 uh, level or a jork. So first of all, um, we'll review the AF, um, all in sustaining cost format and any and some reporting issues with them and how we deal with them. Then we'll discuss a total cost cash cost concept that we like using for 431 or several of our clients like it as well. Then we'll reconcile the differences between the two. So a little commercial about SRK, um, been established in 74, so we had our 40th anniversary a couple of years ago with 1,400 staff, uh, 45 offices worldwide on six continents, and if global warming continues, we'll have one in Antarctica. So, so in terms of valuations, we run the gamut, but in particular in Denver, half our work is split between the economic studies, PEA, PFS, FS, and uh, transactional sports doing due diligence. So. We do a lot of valuations ourselves and we look at a lot, so I feel it gives us quite a, a leg to stand on and opining about how to look at project valuations. So let's jump right in with the 43101 and uh, by inference, uh, JORT guidelines as well. A lot of letters there, but let me assure you, stop reading, there's nothing in the 43101 guidelines about cost reporting. Not a surprise, because the thing was written by geologists and it took them 14 sections to get to a mineral resource. So the fact that they left out a cash cost format is not a surprise. So really, um, everyone talks about all-in sustaining costs, but you, there really are two. Okay? The World Gold Council, which market alerted to for the precious metal reporting, and you see it's composed of three levels, um, adjusted operating costs, all-in sustaining costs, and all-in costs. And I point out that these kind of include some minor non-cash adjustments in them, but not overly uh, too much. Then there's that Wood and McKenzie guidelines for base metal, C1, C2, C3. And this one, my own personal opinion, because it can contain so many non-cash items in it, like depreciation, amortization. When we're doing a, a valuation on a, a cash flow for a project, this really messes things up, it confuses people. So what I'd like to do in the rest of this talk is talk about the all-in sustaining costs and the World Gold Council. So the first step here is the adjusted operating costs. And you see here, pretty well it captures everything. The, the um, items in blue are more or less some stockpile adjustments, some non-cash adjustments, right? There's a bit of hedging there. But overall, it captures and includes byproduct by credits, by the way. But overall, it seems to capture most of your operating costs. So the sustained cost is basically take those operating costs and add on, as Mark alluded to, the corporate GNA, you know, the bean counters and the lawyers and CEOs, and the reclamation, expiration, capital, you know, stripping, development, and that equals your all-in sustaining costs. And these are, when it comes to valuations, related to the operation. Because the next step in the World Gold Council is the all-in costs. Like I said, people mix up these terms. I'm trying just here kind of briefly outline what each one is. So take all in sustaining costs and add any off mine or other mines at a corporate level to give you all in costs. 
right here. And what we find with the main issues, like I said, we do a lot of them, we see a lot of them. And one of the first ones we, th we see a lot of times, our items are neglected. I mean, investors are complaining about the inconsistency in reporting. I think a lot of it just has to do with lack of standardization. So one of the main ones we see, as a matter of fact, uh, we have a client here, we did a due diligence for him, this happened, was um, because TCRCs were taken out of the revenue stream, well, we don't have to count it. Well, in, for, in, with uh, all in sustaining costs or cash reporting, you have to count those. So a lot of times they'll neglect to put in um, infrastructure costs. They think it's not related to mining. So one of the big issues we find is there's a lot of things omitted. So some more stringent definitions are definitely needed for byproduct versus co-product. Mark alluded to that. I'll give you an example, but we, a way we kind of approach it. Sustaining capital, GNA, and expiration. And as Mark said, right, it, it ignores some pretty important items here. And we have some suggestions near the end of this talk about that, so hang tight. So the um, byproduct by co-product rule. So byproduct, if one or more of the commodities is less than 20%, that's a rule of thumb we use. Mark, we can argue about it later. <laughs> and the co-product is those two or more commodities each contribute 20% of the revenue stream. So the byproducts credited against operating costs, whereas co-product is not. In this project here, we've got a thousand ounces of gold and ten thousand silver. So the silver is reporting thirteen percent of the revenue. So if your cash costs seven hundred thousand, you subtract that revenue, silver revenue from there gets five fifty divided by the ounces of gold because that's a primary commodity. So it's five fifty per ounce. In co-product. 1,000 ounces gold, 50,000 silver, so silver is contributing 43, or it's past the 20% rule. Um, there's your cash costs, and then we convert the silver to gold. Uh, we all have done this, so we get to an equivalent gold of $400 per ounce. Now, with these other items that need a little more definition, the sustaining capex, um, rule of thumb for us is if, it, it's a bit, if the capital expenditure expansion is greater than 5%, of the nameplate per, uh, capacity being increased, then that's development. It's not considered sustaining. Just a nice simplifying um, uh, assumption. With GNA, of course, when you do a project valuation, you're not including GN, corporate GNA. Um, sometimes, though, if a, a project has a regional office, let's say Newmont, as their mine operations are HAFO, and uh, one, some companies want to include that regional office in the capital, but it should all be included. Then expiration, if you are not, if your costs are, or your ounces, if you're spending money that is not producing the ounces in your business case, take them off like the off-mine costs. Another one is taxation. You know that income tax is not included in costs. I just, that's beyond me why it isn't. But we always know it's in the, um, always in the top 10, top five uh, risks. This is Ernst and Young and you can see they never call it taxation, it's resource nationalism. That's because there's three types of taxation that they say. One is the mandated export taxes that Freeport's finding in Indonesia. Um, the second is just in-country ownership that Venez countries like Venezuela is imposing or just basically out and out nationalized of operation. Or an increased and newly imposed taxation regimes. And of course, this is the one that affects your cash costs especially. Luckily, we have definitions from the IMF of what taxation regimes mean. And we do know the first, uh, first one, royalty in Semertons, either is a production tax based on volume or an ad valorem tax based on the value of the minerals, already in this cost reporting. Generally, most people we see don't, don't miss that. They'll include it. But what we don't, what was never included, and this just seems like corporate or industry uh, consensus, is the corporate income tax and any resource rent tax. Those are currently not, in, as you know, included. Why it isn't, I don't know. Um, it should, I mean, the top line here is a pre-tax MPV curve at various discount rates and there's your after tax and you need about three or 400 basis points to make up the difference. It's a significant impact to your operations. So okay, let's, let's talk about now this total cash concept which we think kind of simplifies things. Okay, composed of three types, direct cash costs, which are cost to incur to produce and sell the payable product right, from beginning to end. The indirect, 
It's just the cost incurred the legal license to operate and the social license to operate, keep them in compliance. If you're not in compliance there, you're not going to be mining. And then, as we discussed, sustaining capital with assets greater than one year use of life, keep the lights or the pumps on a designated nameplate capacity. So just diving a bit more, what you'd see in direct cost mining, all the general activities. You see here smelting, refining, freight, insurance, selling marketing costs, and the byproduct credits. What we mean by the indirects would be the royalties which are already, most people include already, then this um, permitting environmental costs, social responsibility costs, and any concurrent cash reclamation. And you see here sustaining mining, processing, infrastructure, and any capitalized um, production costs. But what I'd like to point out here at the bottom is, um, rather than a World Gold Council for Precious Mining and a um, Wood Mackenzie for base metal, this would kind of fit most, most commodity types when you keep it this simple. With that, and I'd like to reinforce Mark's point of, yeah, these things do not include corporate income taxes, working capital, financing, corporate G&A, all these non-cash adjustments that are necessary to get, I think, to a financial statement point of view as well. So what we found here with ASIC, go back, here's our, the SRK total cash concept. So cash operating costs sustaining, so that's our total cash. But you see here, there is a adjusted operating cost, but it's including hedging, stockpile, operational, which comes to that operating uh, cost. Adds the sustaining, but you have the corporate GNA and off-mine expenses, so that's giving you all in sustaining costs. Again, reinforcing that this does not include these items. And so for the last one, stay tuned. We have this right now. Um, I'm trying to work on a presentation for later this fall. If you're in Denver Gold Forum, I've already been signed up for it. So um, to give this kind of view where direct cash costs, the indirects, including income tax, uh, interest payable with our financing charges, working capital. Um, perhaps this is the way, not sure about, exp still got to discuss on ex uh, expansion or development capital, how that would all fit. But that would be um, the next step, I think, to this. And with that, thanks for the opportunity to share my views on the subject, and um, thank you very much.